Okay, so at this point you spent hours making your lovely wall or tiles all detailed and beautiful and you wish to project them and paint them. And this is really easy. What we do is go to Substance Painter and go to New. And because it's going to go into UE4 again, I'm just going to leave it as it is at Unreal Engine 4. And I want to select the plane that we exported first. Tile plane. Click OK. So we can see we've got a plane here and we can also see that uh, by default, ZBrush has made the UV of this plane a one-to-one -one ratio with the UV tile, which is what we need. Otherwise, there's no point of doing this as we'll get a gap at the side. So next, we go to Texture Set Settings. And at the bottom here, we want to go to Bake Mesh Maps. And in Bake Mesh Maps, the first thing we want to do is load in our High Poly Mesh. So here in Common, we can go to High Definition Meshes, select this little tab here and find the uh, high poly mesh that we exported and that will load in there okay and first of all we want to check this all works uh, we don't want to be waiting around for this to ex uh, take ages to build so I'm going to set this to 512 and I'm going to leave everything else like anti-aliasing off and just bake that so we can see nothing's appeared so we need to have a little investigation to see why that is so I'm going to go back to bake mesh maps here and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I've definitely imported the right one. Yep, tile HP. And I'm going to increase the max rear distance and the max frontal distance by just a little bit. And I'm going to try to bake that again. There you go. And you can see it's now appeared on the screen. Okay, so this what this is actually doing, it's changing the size of the cage, which is the projection cage around the plane and obviously the plane is very thin so that projection cage isn't very far anyway and in ZBrush we move that plane quite far in front of the actual bricks that we want to project so again we can see that not all the bricks are projected properly so I'm going to increase this a bit more and bake that again and we can see the rest of our details have now appeared okay so looking at this, I can't see any errors. Everything looks quite neat. So I can increase the settings of my baking settings now. Uh, so I'm going to go here and go to 2K. And in anti-aliasing, I'm going to turn this to 4x4. And that's all I'm going to change. I think that should be fine for now. So as you can see, uh, keeping the overall settings low at first allowed me to quickly create bakes and uh, look for errors before finally setting everything to as high as possible. This just saves time because sometimes you might need to rebake this six or seven times or even more. So um, little time saving efforts like that really, really help. Right, so baking's now finished and I'm pretty pleased with how this has turned out. So it's time to add some materials to this. Now this is a stylized material so it's going to be pretty simple. And you might wish to do this in different ways, but I'll show you my technique for creating uh, simple stylized materials in ZBrush. So first of all, I'm just going to add uh, another blank layer above this. And on that layer, I'm going to add a fill. And that fill is going to just have color, uh, metallic, roughness, and color. And this is going to be my base layer. And I want this to be um, a gray to match the rocks. And I'm just going to add a slight tint to it as well. A slight blue tint only very subtle okay so then I want to change the roughness to be quite matte and if you hold shift and right click outside your model you can just manipulate the uh, environment and it's good to do that quite often just so you can make sure that your roughness levels are correct so this is my base layer and the next thing I want to do is create a slight roughness variation so again I'm going to create an empty layer and in this roughness I'm going to add a fill again I'm going to go uh, click the roughness and scroll down until I find a, a black and white noisy material that's not too fiddly or too much white um, grunge dust small okay and then I'm on the settings that pops up for that I'm gonna click uh, global invert 
So we just move this. We can see we have just a slight bit of noise from that. I really don't want the specular to be too much on this. Uh, sorry, the roughness. The next thing we need to do is create the highlights. And we can do that by right clicking the base color and duplicating it. And on fill, uh, first of all, I'm going to turn the roughness and the metallic off. And on the fill color, I'm going to change this to something lighter. And then, now that we've baked all the information here, we can use the smart masks. So I'm going to grab this smart mask here and I'm going to find something that will work, maybe. Um, probably edges strong and just drop that on that base color. And we can see now that's just highlighted those edges. So we can go into the mask editor of that. And we can change the global balance. And I want to turn the sharpen off as well. Turn the texture down a little bit. Okay, so overall it's looking a little bit too blue. So I'm going to go back to my base fill color. Make that a little bit grayer and darker. Okay, now we need to um, make the cavity a little bit stronger. So again, I'm going to go to the base color copy that we made and duplicate that. And I'm going to delete that mask. And this time go to the fill and make this dark. And great. And again, we're going to find a nice smart mask to drop on this. Um, soft dirt. Now the smart mask you pick might not always work, um, but it's worth going through them just to see if there's anything that you like. Um, for example, if I didn't like this, what we could do is delete this mask. Uh, add a black mask and then right click that black mask and add a generator and then when the generator dialog pop box pops up click the gray box and select either mask builder or mask editor and we can see this generates a um, standard uh, mask that has a lot of different settings so if we go into curvature here we can change the convex range and we can even invert it. Or if you didn't like uh, that mask builder, we can click on this again and go to mask editor instead. And in here we have, again, lots of settings like the curvature. And we can change this from mode in the curvature to cavities and then change the uh, different sizes of the cavities here that are affected. Okay, and now this time I want to add a bit of dirt, so I'm going to put an empty layer in and add a filter. Uh, I'm going to put an empty layer in and add another fill. Uh, so I'm going to make this kind of an orange mud. Okay, so then I'm going to add a dust occlusion to this. And in the settings for that mask, I'm going to increase the dirt level of it and contrast. And change the grunge amount just a little bit. Okay, so now if we turn that on and off. You can see it's helped really highlight some of the darker areas there, some of the, um, the, the, the various shapes there. And then I'm going to add a blur as well, just to knock a little bit of that granular noise back. So right click that um, black and white uh, mask, add filter, and then the filter, I'm going to select blur and just increase that. That's a little tiny bit. Okay. And again, I'm going to come back to my base color and just mm, change that a little bit, make it a bit darker. All right, and next I'm going to duplicate this base color and make it a little bit darker and more saturated. And then I'm going to add a black mask to this and just paint out a few of these bricks just to add some color variation to them. And to do that, I'm going to right click that black mask and add paint. Uh, and in my brush settings, I make sure that's white and just Paint out some of these bricks. Uh, 
and then just make it a little bit more opaque. And so we've created quite a simple texture. Um, so then this can be a file export textures and this can be exported into the correct folder using the Unreal Engine 4 um, settings. So here it is set up an example and if we increase the tiling on this, this is now an endlessly tiling uh, texture without seams. And there's a little bit of a repetitiveness in it, um, but not actually that much. And this can be um, hidden with such stuff as decals, vertex painting, or even just props, um, edge trims and stuff like that. And you can see like this is only 10 minutes worth of uh, sculpting and we've already got a great result. So you can, so you can imagine if we put a lot more effort into this, just how great it could actually be.